Hey everyone, this is Shelly from Shelly K Photography and in this tutorial I'm going to go over how I batch edit in Lightroom and then how I'll take it into Photoshop to create an action for that session and then batch edit with that session. So I'm going to go ahead and start with an image in the middle um, just to show you different um, ways you can batch edit in Lightroom. So this is a family session we're looking at, shot on the Oregon coast. So the straight out of camera looks a little cool to me. So I'm gonna bring it up just a tad. And the magentas. I'm gonna bring up the exposure just a little. You can see some clipping, but that's mainly the sky right there. So that looks good. So I've created my own preset in Lightroom based off of the Visco actions, the Portrait 160 plus. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Um, it's just a bunch of tweaks I've done um, to the Portrait 160. Uh, so it's pretty good. I might go down and adjust the yellows a little bit. So I'm I'm pretty happy um, with this edit here. So now what I'm gonna do, um, and what I do for basically every session, so if I'm in a family session working with pretty similar light, I will batch edit that whole session and then go back and make adjustments to white balance and temperature. If I'm doing a wedding, I basically do it um, by section, so I might do all of the um, intimate portraits in one batch edit, um, the getting ready in another batch edit, um, the reception and ceremony in a different batch edit. You can, Lightroom doesn't have a limit on how much you can sort of batch edit um, together, but if you do a, hundreds of photos at a time, um, it can kind of bog down and slow down. And Photoshop will only let you open up 200 photos at a time. So I'm in the develop mode here in Lightroom. So I've got um, my edit there. So I'm just going to hit the shift key all the way over and then here's the sync button. So I'm going to sync. I haven't adjusted white balance on any of these photos. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep the white balance off. I'm going to go ahead and unclick the exposure and I'll go back individually through all those photos and make sure the exposure is okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and hit synchronize. And so you can see it's working through the photos. So I'll go ahead and open up this next one next to it. So you can see everything adjusted. Pretty happy with it all. I might just bump the exposure up just a tad. I'll go to this last image here. So it's getting a little darker. Just going to bump the exposure up. Got my clipping, but that's again the sky. So I'm pretty good with that. So here's our original image that we edited. So if you edit an image in the middle like I did, you can go ahead and just click on that image, hit sync. I've still got exposure unclicked there. And it's going to go through all those images and apply exactly what I had done to that first image. You can see it kind of working through. So and that's basically how I'll batch edit in Lightroom. Again, I'll go through and check my white balance and exposure on all of those, but it's pretty quick. So I'm going to go back to my original image here. And then I will export it. Find a folder. I just created one um, on the desktop Lightroom edit, so Whatever kind of folder organization you have is great. So I usually have a folder with the session name and then I have folders within there, one that's Lightroom edits, one that's Photoshop edits, and then another one um, that's web size edits, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that. I have my extension 
I'm in sRGB, I don't resize, and then I'll export this image. So and you can see that it caught up with my others when I exported this image right here. Uh, kind of quite finished. So I'm going to actually export again just because right here post-processing on the last one I had it said to do nothing. I want to go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. So I'm just going to re-export. So then it'll ask you here so you can override it or you can use a unique name or you can skip. I'm just going to go ahead and override it. Now it should open up in Photoshop. Okay, so now I have it in Photoshop. So now what I want to do is create an action that I'm going to apply to this whole session for just some final edits. So if you go down here, you see oh, it says create new action. So I'm going to go ahead and create new action. I'm just going to put it in my defaults and I'm just going to put, let's call it family, not the greatest typer, speech session, and I'm going to start recording. So I'm going to give it just a little bump with curves in the midtones, which I do to a lot of my photos. So click on and off. That looks good. And then I've already created, I have a lot of actions I've already created, but I'm going to go ahead and apply a vignette. So that looks good to me. And that's mostly what I would do in here. I might uh, soften up the skin a little bit, might brighten the eyes just a little bit, but for the sake of this tutorial, so then I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. So it stopped recording. So now I have my action here. my family beach action that I will apply to the rest of the photos, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. Um, one thing I've created um, that I have found pretty useful um, is a flatten and save action. So I have my flatten and save action here. I'm going to go ahead and press play. It's going to flatten it. And then it's going to close it. Being kind of slow today. Great. And so it closed the image. So as you can see right here, I have this batch processing folder I've created on my desktop. So this is where the image is now saved. So I have the image in here somewhere. I have a lot of images in here, so I won't go in there. So I will batch edit my flatten and saves after I'm done, throw them into this folder, and then I'll just move them into the folder, um, which I keep on my desktop and on an external hard drive. So after I create an action, I always close Photoshop. I have found that if you don't close Photoshop after you create an action, um, it can create some problems. So I haven't gone through uh, all of these for white balance and exposure. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of the images. We'll just grab these last few, but you could grab the entire session if you needed to. I'll go ahead and export that. They'll go into that same folder. And then they should all open up in Photoshop. So if you're doing something really large and you're doing the max 200 images, which I'll do quite often when I'm photographing and edit, when I, I guess when I'm editing weddings. So you can just step away once you get the batch editing in Photoshop because it can take a while.
So it's almost there. Probably could have done fewer photos. It doesn't take so long. Still waiting. Hopefully you guys are still watching the tutorial. I'm probably not going to be able to edit out this silence waiting. But it's good to know the whole process of how long it takes. <laughs> oh, we're so close. Oh, yay. Okay, so now it's going to open them all up in Photoshop. So we wait some more. So as you can see, opening up 200 photos in um, Photoshop from Lightroom um, can take a little while. So again, some of these photos, the white balance isn't going to be perfect in the exposure because I didn't go back through after I had batch edited, but be good enough for the tutorial. And so you can, if you want to create in your action the flatten and save, you can do that as well. So you could have done your additional edits in Photoshop, and then you can flatten it, and then you can save it. But always make sure after you save it to close it into whatever folder you want, and then you should be good to go. I don't typically do that. Um, in Photoshop just because I've created another action and sometimes I'll have some photos that I'll want to do, in a, especially with weddings, to do an additional batch edit and if I'm working on the portraits and I want to do a little skin softening, I like to do that um, with as few photos as I can just because the action I've created takes a while. So I've got all my photos here open so I'm going to go ahead and go into File, Automate, Batch. And so you can see that I was on the flatten and save, and so that's what it will default to. So I, it's in my default actions, and then I have my family beat session. So now I'll just hit OK, and it's going to apply that action I created on all of the photos. So my curves adjust it, adjustment in my vignette. And so now if I wanted to, I could go ahead and just close these with the other action I have created. So I hope you found this useful. Let me know what other tutorials you would like to see.